A lot of real people that I know are losing all their crypto, getting hacked or scammed in present time this year and not just beginners, skilled professionals. In our discord two of our members had this conversation. Haha life is so weird is that? And then there's an NFT number. That was mine. It was stolen. I did pay 101 ETH for it. But you didn't buy it from me. You got it from the new owners that got it from the hackers. I want to scare you in this video because there is action to take right now. This is no ordinary little scam and phishing. Myself, I lost all my money millions of dollars. First I want to say thank you to this member for sharing your story and the learnings as you will all see later in this video. In our community we actually have many high net worth individuals. That's the great thing with crypto and investing. Whether you have 5k or 5 million or 500 million we can all still play this game together because it's all percentage game. It's like gold for something. You can still play together. But unlike golf, you usually don't know who is rich and who is just starting out. So I really want to thank this member for sharing this in so much detail. And this is not an isolated case. I talk to a lot of people in crypto now. A lady in Sweden recently contacted me because she lost 3 million dollars to a scam. Another guy I know got his wallet drained and he has no idea how it happened. I have another highly intelligent friend who lost bitcoin in a scam. And Luke, one of the core bitcoin developers since ages who is absolutely paranoid about operational security. My PGP key is compromised and at least many of my bitcoin stolen. I have no idea how. Help please. Never mind many. It's basically all gone. This was a big thing CZ replied. That was 216 bitcoin worth 6 million dollars today. This company Prime Trust. Prime Trust CEO detailed how the company found itself locked out of its own coal storage wallet. And losing access to millions in deposited assets. Allegedly. But if we go back to our member. As he correctly states here. These are ongoing attacks affecting many OGs from crypto. Very technical people that lost all their coins, more than 100 million dollars starting in April. Now previously the solution for most people, well meaning good advice, was to let an exchange or custodian hold your crypto. Because the risk of you losing the keys or get hacked if you do it yourself was just too big. Now that may still be true if you yourself know that you're absolutely hopeless when it comes to IT and passwords. But I think for most people that was also pretty bad advice. No one has missed that most of the trusted exchanges went bankrupt last year. FTX, Celsius, BlockFi, Voyager, Genesis, the list goes on. And what was at least not clear to me at the time is that it's apparently not your coins anymore when you deposit them on the exchange. So if they screw up their business, not even getting hacked, just doing bad business deals, that's your money they are losing because it became their money when you deposited it. Remember I had a lawyer here on the channel last year who explained that laws are just not in the place, at least in the US, to protect you from that. It doesn't matter what the terms and conditions are. Even the custody coins aren't returned 100% in cases like Celsius. And actually that's the same with the bank. If they go bankrupt and they don't get the bailout from the government, they don't have your money and you won't get it back. For smaller retail investors, yes, the government guarantees a smaller amount. But that doesn't exist for crypto and if you have a lot of money, is anyway just a small part. Now this problem isn't solved by self custody either for things like stable coins. Remember earlier this year 3.3 billion dollars of USDC's cash reserves remained with the Silicon Valley Bank. As of Thursday we had initiated transfers of these funds to other banking partners but they had not been settled at close of business Friday. Now later that weekend Silicon Valley Bank got a bailout from the government government if they hadn't that would also have had an impact even on the self custody USDC. That problem is the problem that bitcoin actually solves. There is no entity that can go bankrupt. There is no money at some bank that can lose it. But instead you can get your wallet hacked or losing your keys. Not losing the keys seems obvious. That sounds easy right. 
Turns out it's not. Many estimate that 6 million out of the 19 million Bitcoin mined have been irretrievably lost. There's more research on this topic which you can read if you want. In fact, some people think that more Bitcoin is lost every day than is mined. And what Bitcoin doesn't solve is a reliable store of value. 80-85% drop in value. And more if counting inflation isn't storing value for something you might want to use, if you are saving for an apartment deposit or whatever. That's why we also need more functionality in crypto to solve that too, to be able to buy or sell to protect the capital during downtrends with tools like DeFi, which makes this an exponentially harder problem to solve. Have I scared you enough yet? for you to take action. I think there are only two reasonable tracks. Track one is self-custody done right. So this is what we will start with. And to do it right, we need to understand what actually happens to people. Which of all the threats in the world actually result in people losing money in practice, in the real world. Let me give you a backstory to that. I've lived and worked in countries like Pakistan, Burma, Philippines, where the four corners of Mindanao is no joke. And at Ericsson, where I worked then, we had this expat doctor, Ulle, 70-something, amazing guy, lived all over the world himself and supported all these expats, crazy people like myself. And when I was moving to Pakistan, I was worried. I had seen on TV. I was worried will I get shot or blown up in some terrorist attack. Then Ulle said, nah. That doesn't happen. What actually happens to expat is two things. Number one, they have a traffic accident. Either in the car or they're walking home at night. It's dark and they get hit by a car. Someone who doesn't see them. Number two, they catch a serious STD. So Ole said, wear a seatbelt. Watch where you're going if you're walking home from the bar at night. And wear a... And of course he was right. Pakistan is the only place I've lived in where if someone would have pickpocketed me, which didn't happen, 10 people would have run after the guy and taken the wallet back for me. That doesn't happen in Stockholm. And of course there was no terrorist attacks. While I've had three or four traffic accidents over the 10 years I was an expat. But I wore my seatbelt and I took care to pick a big heavy car. So I was fine. Much thanks to Olle outlining what threats actually result in damage. Which are the priority threats? Now if we go back to crypto. I'm the Olle. I talk to a lot of people so I see what actually happens. And it's this. Seed phrase storage. People don't store the seed phrase right. And it doesn't matter if it's on a steel plate or on a smart card. Number two, signing scams. People sign something which wipes their wallet. And social scams. Basically, people send their money away themselves. There is no technical hack. If we go back to our member who is so generous sharing his learnings. The irony of life is that just two weeks before, I also bought new ledgers and steel plates. Yes, but not just paper, steel plates. In at least two different places countries. But then also trust the place where you store them. Which highlights this complexity. If you buy a ledger hardware wallet, the money is not in the wallet. The wallet is the seed phrase. Having the 24 word seed phrase means you have the money. So even if you write this on a steel plate or on three copies of paper, where will you store them? If you put it in a drawer under your desk and your cleaning lady finds it, I can assure you she will know what it means. She doesn't need the pin code from your ledger or do something from your home. She just need to photograph the words. Then one day your money is just gone from your wallet and you have no idea how. You were literally sitting there at home with your ledger and someone else drained it. Or if you have a break in and they find your steel plate with words, they will know what it is, believe me. Okay, so maybe we should store the seed phrase in a password manager then, something like LastPass. And if you look at MetaMask, they literally suggest it. How do I save my secret recovery phrase? Save in a password manager is the first suggestion. No. That is a bad idea. Never put your seed phrase in your computer 
or your phone. There are so many ways this can go wrong. This range of wallet drains could be seeds or keys literally drained from LastPass, which for 10 years has been one of the most trusted password managers. But they were hacked last year, and while it shouldn't be possible to brute force this, perhaps it's still happening. And that's just one of many ways that this can go wrong. Perhaps that wasn't the case. Perhaps there was some other issue. If you have a keylogger, for example, and you start by typing MetaMask in Google, and then you start entering Apple, Bravo, Foxtrot here, or whatever your seed phrases are, and you can Google yourself here, best keyloggers for Mac in 2023. And while Mac OS is generally better, where you can at least try to disable input monitoring, the real hacks will circumvent all this. So rule number one is to never enter your seed phrase in your computer or your phone or in any other digital domain. Main. Number two, don't split the seed phrase. The first idea most people will have is that if it's a 12 word seed phrase, they will take six words and put them here and the other six words and put them in another place. Or if you have a 24 word seed phrase, maybe you do three pieces of eight or something. Don't do that because if you have half then you can basically brute force the rest. And instead you increase the risk of losing one part of your seed and you might not know how to brute force it. So don't split the seed phrase. Number three, Add a strong 25th seed passphrase. A better solution to the problem that your cleaning lady or a burglar might find your seed phrase is to combine the seed phrase with a strong password as the 25th seed phrase. Ledger has this option, for example. You can read how to do it. And that password you can store digitally in case you forget it, because that it in itself isn't enough. Or in a different location, so then 24 word seed phrase in one place, and that passphrase, the password, in another place. Because assume you will forget it. And just be aware that now if you lose either the 24 words seed phrase or the 25th passphrase, like the password, you've lost access to your coins. And for clarity, this isn't the same as the password for the Ledger app. That is just the password and if you lose it you can reinstall it. Number four. Consider recovery in case of your own death. Remember this guy, Canada's largest cryptocurrency exchange. The company's CEO and founder died in 2018 after traveling to India. 190 million in cryptocurrency owed to 115,000 customers was missing or could not be accessed because only Cotton held the password to offline cold wallets. Next buy the hardware wallet directly from the manufacturer on your initiative not from some second-hand site or someone doing an incoming sales push and not from a reseller on Amazon because it could be hacked already when you get it. So which is the best hardware wallet then? Well, despite all the issues with Ledger, I think they are still a good choice. There is another hardware wallet solution, Tangem, which are these credit card based smart card solutions together with an app on the phone. Then the seed phrase isn't physically written somewhere with a pen or steel, it's stored on this card and you can also set the password. I think this is a good solution also and definitely a real alternative to a ledger. I just feel I can't really overlook all the aspects yet. I'll come back to that. So after seed phrase storage, the next big priority threat is the signing scams. The difficulty of keeping your coins safe gets worse when we move over to DeFi and NFTs. When you sign a transaction on your ledger or your app, you don't really understand what you are signing. I could go on all day about how to make sure you do that more carefully and so on. But now I am the Ulle, the doctor. I'm telling you, even very experienced people suddenly one evening after a few beers sign the wrong contract. They go to a website thinking they are somewhere else, they connect the wallet, sign and gone. Wallet drained down to the last drop. Or they receive some USDT, only it's not the real USDT, it's a scam, they interact with it, sign something, whoops money gone, or a scam NFT. So while being more careful of course is good. This is what you need to do instead. You need to have two wallets. One storage wallet and one hotter wallet that you actually use. One hardware wallet which you only 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 store stuff on. 
if you use Ledger, you send Bitcoin or ETH or USDT or whatever coins you have to that wallet. You send them out with the Ledger app and equivalent if you use another hardware wallet. You don't sign anything, you don't connect it to Uniswap, you don't connect it to OpenSea, you don't do anything else with that wallet than to send or receive coins with the native app. This is why I say I can't really overlook all the consequences with this Tangem wallet because for example NFTs has not yet been launched in the Tangem app. You need to connect your Tangem wallet to the NFT marketplace through Wallet Connect. But I'm not sure. Then you have wallet number two. If you're looking to swap USDT to ETH, you send USDT from your main storage wallet number one to hot wallet number two. And wallet number two, you connect to Uniswap and swap from USDT to ETH. Then you send the ETH back to storage wallet number one. Then if you screw up while you're on Uniswap and wipe everything, you only lose what was in that trade, not your entire wallet storage wallet number one. Always two wallets, one for only storage, and one for use with DeFi and NFTs and so on. This is one of the most important advice of this entire video. It would have saved a lot of people a lot of money. For the hot wallet, you could even consider using MetaMask or something. If you're lazy or have small position size. Because the ease of workflow could make a difference. And frankly, you don't know what you're signing on the ledger anyway. But the risk that you are adding then, if you do that, is the keylogger as I showed you. Because then the seed phrase will go into your computer and if your computer is compromised money from the hot wallet will be gone. The mitigation for that is to buy a separate computer only for that and then don't download anything on that one. But two hardware wallets is better however slightly less convenient. The third priority threat is social scams. Sending money. People send their money away themselves. From all the cases I've seen, this is the most common way to lose the money. You store the seed right, you haven't signed anything fishy, then you take all the money to a fake investment site. Either they offer 10% return per month because they have a proprietary trading bot or something like that, or you get an incoming call from a very nice account manager and on the 10th call he convinces you to invest a little. You get the login to the exchange something something and to your delight because you are a genius you trade your 1k up to 10k. Your account manager calls again and he congratulates you. Then the next time you send in 100k you trade it up to 1 million. Now you're really a genius. Now you go to the bank, take out more money from your bank, send it to Coinbase or Binance, buy more Bitcoin and send it to your exchange exchange something something to your investment portfolio and you take it up to 10 million dollars. You log in, you're so excited, you're so happy, you feel you've really made it in life. The only problem is that the money doesn't actually exist. It's just a website. When you try to withdraw it, they will say it's stuck on the blockchain or something and you have to send in more ETH to unstuck it and you will realize that you're scammed. Or you fall for an impersonator. Someone sets up a fake account impersonating your colleague or your uncle or me. You think you're interacting with me and I'm giving you great advice, uh, do this on that exchange while actually it's not me or your uncle and you follow the advice and send your money to the scammer. So the seventh priority threat mitigation is to assume that all incoming phone calls, SMS, emails, DMs or attempts to scam you. A few more tips. Use two-factor authentication on everything. Secure your computer or better have two. Learn from the professionals. If you run a project and you want to get a listing on Binance for example, they will tell you to go to the Apple shop in person and buy a new computer today and then don't download and install anything on that one and use that one to log in. That's good advice. Next, if you're using Google for email, sign up for the advanced protection program and you need to do it for all your accounts, not just one. That is easy to miss. Contact your cell phone provider and do what you can to guard yourself against SIM swap protection, but realize that it can still fail 
so don't rely on SMS for password resets. Don't leave large amount of money on exchanges and take note that clawbacks can happen even if you withdraw funds. So don't withdraw it and then lose the money because in worst case if the exchange goes bankrupt they can come and ask the money back and then if you have lost it it's not good. Don't connect other services to the exchange if you can avoid it. Don't open the API access if it's not necessary. So for example, I do charting on TradingView. TradingView also has functionality to buy or sell. You can connect it to the exchange. I don't use that. I want to have charting very casual I can use it on my phone on my computer there's no security risks with it another less common threat but has happened is this the ledger app on your computer or phone shows the funds even if you have disconnected the ledger hardware wallet if you are traveling Customs can ask you to show your crypto holdings especially if they find the ledger wallet in your luggage then if you're in some shady country and you've just shown that you have a ledger and the ledger app shows that you have a lot of money on it. I wouldn't sleep so well at night at the hotel. Many countries are corrupt. So keep that in mind. You could delete the accounts from the ledger app or set up two accounts with two different pins. But keep in mind that it could also be a crime to lie to a customs officer. An alternative is to simply leave the ledger at home instead. There is one more threat, which fortunately happens less, but it does happen, and that's the wrench attack. A physical attack, organized crime, after all your advanced cryptography, someone buys a $5 wrench and beats you with it until you send all the Bitcoin. Another member wrote this today when I was preparing for this video. I was shocked that the list of Celsius claim is public with full names and balances by Stretto, a buffet for scammers and burglars. With a unique name, no problem to visit you at home. And it's even worse. The maybe biggest problem with crypto today is that it's too public. And since all the ledges are public, you can basically figure out who has how much. And while some politicians like Elizabeth Warren want to ban even more privacy protection solutions, I think the real problem is the opposite. It's too public already, which creates violent crime. It's already a shopping list for the criminals. And with more of these reporting requirements coming, more of these Excel sheets will leak. The only full protection against that is to give up the self-custody. That is track two, basically getting the price exposure, but not have the crypto as such. Keep the money at the bank. There are CME futures, these price tracker certificates we've had in Sweden on Nasdaq Nordics, which was Europe's first Bitcoin ETP launched already in 2015. The Grayscale Bitcoin Trust has acted as one such proxy, which in the beginning was trading at the premium, then at the discount. Now the discount has recovered a lot. We have the MicroStrategy stock or these new capital insurance based solutions that Safello did in Sweden last year that I covered that I think was really innovative. Basically something that keeps the money at your bank because then you can't take it out in Bitcoin and send it even if you wanted to and the crooks know that. But of course that adds another risk because suddenly you add a massive counterparty risk instead like bankruptcies or other mismanagement which was the problem that Bitcoin wanted to solve or at least one of the big ones. A lot of people are hoping for a real spot ETF in the future because it could potentially at least reduce some of those counterparty risks over what we have today. But it still won't eliminate it. Losing keys, hacks, if LastPass can get hacked, if Ledger can get hacked, two companies that only do IT security for a decade, they can get hacked, then any company can get hacked. If we don't want this track two and really want the self-custody and still need to protect against organized crime, against the ranch attack, then at least avoid holding physical crypto with access keys at home. Then you have to take the inconvenience of not actually having access to your main wallet from your home or office. Keep it in a bank vault or in another country where there are people with guns. Maybe get a gun with license yourself or hire a security guard with a gun. Have multiple people in your home so it's harder to prevent all of them from calling emergency. For me, since I'm a pretty public person now, 
I have gone mostly for track 2 here. I have my personal money and almost all my company money with the bank. Not very cypherpunk, but means that there is no point to come in here through the door and rob me really. So if any crooks are listening, I recommend to steal my car instead. It's parked outside. If I didn't do this public service YouTube, I would probably make a different choice. And it's actually the biggest reason why I sometimes think if this YouTube is even worth it. But it's also fun and I meet a lot of great people, so for now I'm still here. I asked our member how he handled the emotional loss of losing millions, all his crypto. And he wrote like this and said that I can use it in this video. I believe I'm lucky because I may say I'm an OG in crypto. I only cared about the number of coins and not about the USD value. So in the past 10 years I was rich and then not rich and so on. And I got used to this part of losing USD value. Number two. I have a business that I am growing and I only looked at my crypto wealth as a bonus life offered to me. I care more about the tech and what crypto will do for humankind. Number 3. One year ago I was liquidated when using Reflexer Finance to get a stablecoin loan. Back then my number of ETH coins dropped because of it. It took me 5 days to pass this experience. It was my first time managing the feelings and the concept of a big loss. Number 4. I already know the 5 steps of grief. denial anger, bargaining, depression and acceptance. So I pushed myself to the fifth step sooner. Two months ago when I lost, got robbed of all the crypto, I knew that no matter how I feel at on the moment, the human mind will forget. This time it only took me two to three days to pass over the mental part. Number five, I knew or know now this is an opportunity. Genuinely I feel now after two months more fired up to focus even more on my business related to tech payments and determined to integrate crypto tech in it and build a bigger business that will bring positive impact in society and as a bonus I will also make money. But most importantly I already trained my mind for years to think that money is just a game and should not determine who you are. Maybe I sound too philosophic to most of you, but this is what I believe and what makes me more motivated to continue life with full enthusiasm. As a conclusion, if you want to give the lady an advice coming from me, that was the lady who lost 3 million recently, maybe it is this. Now she has the opportunity to double down on courage and execute her professional personal plans to start thinking I have nothing to lose anymore and reach for her stars, for her dreams. To use these feelings to fuel her actions, new, more brave actions. Okay guys, I hope you feel something here because I do. I agree profoundly with this. In my life, some of my biggest setbacks later turned out my biggest blessings in disguise. Job opportunities that didn't work, that I really wanted. Because of that setback, I got on the track that then took me to unimaginable places. Relationships that failed, that didn't work out when I was younger, that I spent weeks crying over. Because of that setback, I met mother of my children. I made a huge list of trading mistakes in 2017. Because of that setback, I got the idea to the Lawson line process. As Steve Jobs said, You can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. Have some faith in God or the universe or whatever you believe in that you will be able to look back at the setbacks and find it was necessary blessing in disguise to take you to where you ended up. Just don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Now this isn't an excuse to be lazy with your security. It's like this story where the priest falls in the water. Fortunately a log floated by, but the priest was swimming comfortably in the water, so he felt, I don't need the log, God will save me. So the log floated away. Then the guy in a rowboat came by. Ah, oh, come, I can save you. The priest is praying. No, it's fine, I'm praying, God will save me. So. The rowboat continued. Then Coast Guard comes in a helicopter, they shout in the megaphone, grab the rope, grab the rope, no God will save me. So the helicopter flew away. Then the guy drowned, came to heaven, where he met God. I've been a devoted man my whole life, I prayed, and when I really needed your help, you let me down. Why? Then God replied, first I sent you a log, then I sent you a rowboat, then I sent you the entire Coast Guard, what more do you want? So take action when God sends you the Coast Guard 
you grab the rope. Even after doing all this, assume there will still be some mishap at some point. So limit your risk, don't put all your eggs in one basket. No matter which exchange blows up or what hack happens, make sure you live to trade another day. And realize that Crypto Anno 2023 is closer to playing poker in a Wild West saloon than saving in an index fund. Don't gamble with money you can't afford to lose. Really don't. I will not include any affiliate links, ads or anything else in this video. Instead I ask you to please share it if you found it useful. Thank you Tak. See you all out. Hey don't.